So, so, so what, what, what motivated you to call in today? So I thought that the last caller, I think is just hilarious. Now, I don't know how much, I'm not going to, I'll try my best to not judge you by the ideas of the last caller and see what your opinions are yourself. But oh, I find boy, it the height go. of irony that we now hear left-wing people that have cheered or ignored violence that has occurred for four here years we go. since Don Trump's been here president by left-wingers predominantly now claim that the other side's not worth talking to and they're hypocritical. Uh, the truth is, as you know, I think all sides have hypocrites and extremists on them. That's true. That's what I'm I have. Saying. Yeah, I, I I agree. I unambiguously called out the riots that I saw uh, as they were even before they were occurring. I did a video in the car like, uh oh, this looks bad. And if you called out Black Lives Matter, you should be calling out. Remember when Rob Knorr, with no evidence, accused that uh, that alleged Antifa guy of an execution. And then it later turned out that it was self-defense pretty unequivocally which is what i said that it was there was a possibility of that and he shouldn't be so quick to judge it um and then he never retracted that hmm rob nor is a piece of shit uh i debated him a while ago uh somniostatic um in fact i i creamed him in a debate about antifa it was really good uh rob nor is one of the few remaining right-wing twitch people um he also runs a uh local radio show called normal america um yeah it was it was it was deba it was a good one. Oh, it was a fucking good debate if you haven't seen it you gotta go see it is he a climate denialist yeah i believe so yeah yeah all this if it occurs on the right i've talked about how Welcome this back, argument Sadowski. that oh no it was antifa is horseshit uh the reason that it's horseshit i'm not even saying i haven't done enough research could there have been some left-wing people or antifa people absolutely i mean i was there but did i right <laughs> i mean right well, I assume you didn't break into the Capitol. Yeah, I don't think I me don't. doing any violence while I was in a Biden hoodie would have ended well for me. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, the idea that there were people dressed up as Trump supporters. Yes. That supposedly yes it could have correct. happened theoretically. But here's the question. Correct, uh -huh. Did Trump supporters give Black Lives Matter that benefit of the doubt? When there was a riot, like, say, in Atlanta, did, and did Trump supporters go, now, wait, that might not have been Black Lives Matter. That could have been right-wingers dressed up as Black Lives Matter. I will Matter. say, on the left, there were people who was like, actually, I think that's uh, counter Intel Pro right there. That looks like a cop. Uh, they, there was actually a lot of people would post clips online with somebody smashing a thing. It's like, that dude looks really sus. That looks like a cop to me. I actually think that's a plant. They were, that, was, that was legitimate dialogue. Well, all right. I mean, wasn't that confirmed for the one in Minneapolis? Wasn't that literally confirmed? Was it not later revealed that the guy who started the fire in the fucking auto zone was not, was, was literally a right wing guy? Yeah, a boogaloo boy. Anyway. That was going on on the left a lot of times. It's still happening on your chat as I was watching your call. The, 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 the irony is palpable. It's insane. And we're talking about two types of irony here. One, individual irony. That means what we're, mm -hmm. what I'm doing, what you're doing, what each person typing does. But the other type of irony that matters is those in positions of power which you could overwhelmingly see that the people in positions of power of this country. What? What does that even mean? Had no problem whatsoever or ignored almost totally the riots, the violence that we've seen for the past four years, if it came from the left. But anytime there's potential right wing violence or actual right wing violence, they, they jump the Capitol, on it like you it's the end of the idiot. world and then justify their Why does he always sound like that? Because he's trying to be Rush Limbaugh. He's trying to be Rush Limbaugh. Have you ever heard Rush Limbaugh? Uh, Rush Limbaugh is is just like this. He talks real fast. He's like, I'm blah, 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 blah. he's trying to be Rush Limbaugh, but he's not. Is in which they've wanted to accomplish the whole time. So, so I, just just go ahead. Sorry. So I, I wanted to, I wanted to get to to an interesting point about this. So I believe violence doesn't just spring out of nowhere, right? Obviously, there's a right. root cause to violence, right? It might be like. Oh, the economy crashed. The people are angry, so they're rioting because they want to get their jobs or something, right? Like that happened in Lebanon, for example, right? Where the economy crashed and they're pissed at the elites because they're corrupt, right? So when I see violence on the street, while it is true that 93% of uh, of right, BLM protests were, were peaceful, um, so were probably the vast majority of Trump rallies, for example, right? Correct. The vast majority of Biden uh, protests, by, well, not by, I mean, Biden rallies were also peaceful for the ones he did have. He didn't do a lot. Not going to miss he, him. You know, nope. The campaigns that they had concerns about COVID. Uh, Bernie rallies, I, did, I didn't really ever see a, any violence there. Now, I would also, I would like to point out the pro point, though, that a protest is also different than a rally, right? A rally is something Good you go point, to, to say, I support this thing. 
or the change of this thing and you know you're going there to support your person or a protest is you're going out and you're opposing something and uh so obviously the the environment around what a political rally Good to support point, a Dylan. candidate is and the vi- and the environment against there's this injustice against us and we need change are going to be different the emotions on the ground the environment on the ground all of that's going to be different uh, for example when you have a lot of these um a lot of the times when you see protests on on the right which are either like um a great a great example would be um i i don't really know what to call it because it's not True, a Kyle. rally there's not really a like there's not a, like a, there's proud boys rallies but there's also proud boys counter protests those have got violent at a higher rate than trump rallies because the proud boys uh, in my opinion from my interactions of them act kind of like a fight club so That's I would true. like to they say that a rally club. is also a different thing fundamentally from a protest. Would you would you agree with me on that? I do, but I will just say it's sometimes hard to suss out what they are. For example, what? was the women's march or was it a rally to have the women's march or was that a protest? Um like see that's, can, that's I can interesting. see it could blur that, a line. That's interesting, right. right? Um that actually what what would that be? So I would say there is some blurriness in it, but right. I would say that a campaign event where you go where Trump speak is most likely a rally in support of that person, right? Or if you go to a campaign event where I'm going to this Trump campaign event, Trump's going to speak and say why you should vote for him. It was obviously in comparison a, to, I'm uh, going to this place after um, yeah, this shooting. I oppose what happened. I'm going there to oppose it. That, that, that would be like a protest. Campaign rallies, I think, are pretty solidly campaign. Even if there's blurriness in the middle, if you go somewhere where a presidential candidate or president or the president's speaking and he's doing it to kind of you know rally everyone in support of him that that sounds like a rally now there's also an element on, on this one i would say where they're protesting the steel quote unquote now I, I i'm not prepared to have a conversation of whether there was or was not a steal but the idea yeah, was that some people right. went because to stop the steal the idea right. that there was massive voter fraud. The well, yeah, he literally was, told them to uh, do that. Fraudulent, you're right. Um, for what any number of reasons, it could be Dominion, it could yeah. be whatever, right? Well, that's um, what happens when you try to talk. So to I think it was. I'm, a, I'm talking irrelevant of of that. Like I, I'm not here to talk about whether there was a steal or not. Like, I, yeah. we could have a discussion another day. Suffice <laughs> it to say, my problems. What were do you think, with Rob's, the election? What do you think, election? Rob's opinion on whether there was a steal or not is? Hmm. Mm, I wonder day and at things like censorship uh mass control of the media and the flow of information i mm-hmm. have not been able to prove nor and you've you had me on your show I'm, i don't talk yep. much about fraud after election day because i can't prove it, it it's yeah. irrelevant of what i think happened if i can't prove it i don't have access to the data and i totally understand <sighs> I any left dumbest, winner who would say dumb. um show me the proof that the election was stolen oh you don't have the proof then shut up now there's a question of whether or not they should uh, do audits and things like that, but that's not really what this conversation's mm-hmm. about. Yeah, um, uh, and, weaselly and there is, there. I- I'll tell you this, full on. Very weaselly. Well, you know, I don't, I, I don't have the evidence for it, but that doesn't mean that, that we shouldn't have our government waste a fuckload of time doing completely baseless audits of it. You know, you know, you know, and the, the 61 lost lawsuits. You know, just, just saying. You know, that sort of thing. There are claims that are obvious bullshit that have been pushed by Trump supporters about, you know, that just as soon as I hear them, I'm like, okay, what? Oh, you know, Mm -hmm. the Navy SEALs flew into Germany and took over some, you know, server that was in Germany and it's horseshit. Yeah. Why would you believe that? If it, it, regardless of what your political persuasion is, if you, if the other side was saying that you'd be like, yeah, right. Yeah. Sure. It it doesn't really. I mean, it could happen, but. I don't understand it either, because even if I was like, let, let's say I was on your side, for example, I would hate to be the person who's like, I have concerns about the election fraud. And someone's next to you like, yes, they took over the servers of Germany. And then everybody's going to yeah. look at you like this is this is your side. This is what you're for. Right. right? And I said the same thing, like, like, consider that, like, let's say you were someone that had problems with 9-11. Yep. Hypothetically. He sounds just like well, I, 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 have, I have a big problem with 9-11. I think most of my chat probably has a problem with what happened at 9-11, too. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. like, if you thought that the official story was ridiculous. Oh, like, my oh. take on it was, like, I had a problem with, well, wait a minute. If planes were able to hit the Pentagon after three buildings, what are we doing for national security if a foreign invader wanted to do? Like, who lost their job? What is the plan to make sure? Here this we is? go. By the way, if we allow the Capitol to be overran by some guys in bullhorn outfits, what, what the fuck's the plan to make sure this shit doesn't happen again? Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was kind of my angle on it. And basically people were like, oh, here's another guy that thinks the buildings were holograms. 
Yeah, like, yeah. Well, no, the, like I what do the think fuck? There's... It just harms your side to have that bullshit being said. Of course, there, you there, know? there was a huge. The thing is, there was a response. Look at oh, that is so manipulative. See, this is one thing I I will respect about Rob. He's incredibly manipulative. He goes, well, you know, I had these questions about about nine eleven and and how they actually hit the Pentagon and all this shit. But then you have some crazy person saying, oh, what if they're holograms? Yeah, those people do exist, but there's a fuckload of 9-11 truthers who don't believe they're holograms, but nonetheless, um, more or less pinned on the Jews. Like, you see what I mean by making these sort of false equivalences, which he does all the time? They're very manipulative. It's manipulative framing. It's in a conversation done after 9-11 about, well, what about security? And that's was the creation of the TSA, the Patriot Act, and a lot of overreaches yeah, of American Correct. government. And because we weren't willing to have the discussion of how do exactly. we do this and safely, that led to led to that. I, I will agree with you on that. Totally agree. So, yep. I, but, okay, but here's the point. Uh -huh. Like the, the point that I'm getting to try I would to be sell willing out, to like, bet. I would be willing to bet fucking $20, $40 that Rob Knorr supported the Patriot Act. You could make a nuanced difference between whether or not this was a rally or it was a protest. The point is, we have uh -huh. seen basically More unchecked sushi. examples sushi. of rides. Again, according to the huh? numbers that even people in your chat were saying, 93% of Black Lives Matter rallies were peaceful. That leaves 7% that weren't. Uh -huh. If there were any organization that, like, for example, the Proud Boys, if you'd see over 5% of Proud Boys rallies would result in violence or riots, you would say, there's a damn problem. Something's going on here. I would have no problem with people saying that. Mm -hmm. So the idea I think that Rob we're Nor supposed is his, I think Rob Nor is in the 40s. I, I think he's in his 40s. What about people who think it was an inside job, but they don't blame the Jews? Well, I'll give him a few months. To somehow think, oh, well, it was only 228 different locations. That's just locations, by the way, not actual riots. Because we saw in Portland, we saw not riots. Not much, Marinara. We just started. Over. This is the beginning. The fact that I'm supposed to be like, well, then no big deal. It's absurd. And to listen to a caller of yours talk about the hypocrisy of the right while he himself literally engages in the very hypocrisy that he's criticizing, where, oh, but when my side did violence, it was okay. That violence was okay. So, and so that's the, the the real problem I have with this. The, the data you're talking about, I remember this Both. actually came up on last week's Both. show. Someone no said, well, this is actually different locations, not different events. And then they went into the specifics of it. And I remember I remember Sockdem left saying something about, well, it, the, the, you have to go deeper into the. I, I'll, I'll, I'll review that again and try to get back to you if I remember to. But I could have sworn it was actually different dates. It was just a misinterpretation of a certain part of the study. I know the study you're talking about. I'll ask Sock left. I'll actually message him right now about if he has that number on the protests um, um but I, like, but but besides are you gonna would you deny that we've seen at least let's just take a very conservative number we've seen at least two dozen riots that have resulted as blm protests is that useful. fair um blm associated protests oh sure we can say like a dozen sure okay a dozen even a dozen let's say that that's 12. like okay if you if people make excuses for those 12 even in that even if that claim is true even if that claim was true none of them none of them were sieges on the capital none of them involved mass death and these were a part of the biggest civil rights movement in american history they were cop riots they were cop riots yeah that's all he ever does. He always finds a way to excuse his shit and try and make it look like everyone's a hypocrite except for himself when he knows that there's no, no claim. And we had this debate, by the way. We I had a, this debate with him. You can go watch my debate with him about Antifa. He knows jack shit about Antifa. He doesn't know anything about the groups that he extols as, ter as terrorists. And then the first time that there seems to be a right-wing riot or a Trump supporter riot, all of a sudden say this is unacceptable well it comes off as incredibly hypocritical and it's one thing just if it's just riot, me or dude. you who the hell are we they but were trying to, they were trying the to, vice president the they president they were trying to it they fa they tried and failed to assassinate sitting politicians we're not talking about a riot they went in to assassinate their political opponents what the fuck are you talking about dude 
United States, when it's the Senate leader, when it's Maxine Waters, when it's Nancy Pelosi, when it's the mainstream media, when it's our intel agencies, then it starts to be a problem. Then when you see that, oh, by the way, we're going to crack down and just anyone that's on the right, uh, we're going to say that all oh, these social media platforms have to treat them like they're inciting violence and things like that. It becomes abject nonsense. And so I don't understand if either you're against political violence or you're not. I've been vehement. I, I, I could back up my claim. I called out Trump supporters that did this. I said they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. If they could find who directly led to the killing of this cop, if this is how he died, they should be given the death penalty. Look at, listen not, to that. I listen to how much, I wish that, I wish, I, uh, maybe Dylan will call him on him, but listen to how much he, he embeds into his argument there. Oh, if they can prove that he even died because of this. Look at how much he, he's, all of his arguments are instilling doubt this is why I call Rob Knorr a demagogue, because Rob Knorr does not make um, rational arguments. What he does is he, he drops seeds of doubt. He drops conspiratorial thought into everything that he says. What Rob does is propaganda. He doesn't make arguments. In fact, he usually avoids making arguments in lieu of sending um, seeds of doubt uh, into, the, um, into, the, into the crowd. What? I agree with that, actually. I would actually be led. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, well, the death penalty, that's a different day, different story. Right. Um. Yeah. But so I, I agree, and I'll just say this flat out, that it's bad to burn down your community, Uh. period. It's probably bad. Now, there, of course, and there's some certain scenarios where, like, a dictator has taken over and we need to overthrow. Like, there's certain okay, scenarios yeah. where, of course, like, uh, why? Like, but generally it's bad, right? So I was just putting that out there as if anybody says, well, if Hitler took over, just, you know, just to fucking placate them. So the nitpickers, I want to end the violence, period. Right. That's my thing As I, I don't like people having their communities burned down. I don't like people dying. That's bad. My thing is, how do we solve these issues of the violence occurring? And what are the sources of it so we can address them at the source? Because I don't because we, we're constantly like yelling about the violence, talking about the violence, but there's not a lot of like, well, how do we stop the violence? And a lot of people's like, well, lock them up. Well, that doesn't stop people from getting violent. Occurred, you never occurred. have arrested civil Miles disobedience tenders, away, $50. right? Unchecked so, riots or cultists attacking the Capitol. Thank Wait, you, Miles, also, for the, I never defended any violence. Stop lying. $50. Rob. Miles, Damn. Thanks for the Miles, thanks for the fifty bucks. Damn, so the Dylan. thing is <laughs> When it comes to That's BLM, nice I think the core for them is unaddressed issues that have happened of a failed reconstruction during the 1870s, uh, a, a wealth gap, um, a, a dip, problems with policing, and there's a lot of issues that are the sources of that. So anytime these happen, I try to drag the conversation to that. When it comes to what happened in D.C. with the pipe bombs and the media getting rushed and... They constantly say that BLM protesters got away with it when in reality there were 14K arrested last summer with over 80 federal charges on top of local jurisdictions. Yup. Do you remember when I was reporting on this and I was talking about thousands of people arrested and held um, during, for, for peaceful protesting in my own city, in cities on really close to me like Portland? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. They're they're full of shit. Thank you very much for the incredibly incredibly generous uh ten dollar donation there. Thank you so very much. Really appreciate that. Um, let me just grab your name here, uh, Martha Clayton. Thank you so much. That was very very generous of you. Thank you. People are there mods in YouTube chat? The as far as I know, yes. Went on there. I mean, I don't know if you yes. saw. I was we I was in DC when it happened. In here. I was fucking. I was I was spit at. I was threatened with fucking execution. It was the type of fucking dialogue that was thrown at me from people who came from outside my community, you know, the outside agitators I hear about all the time, right? It was it was, it was, was extremely discouraging. Of course, I, I told them I'd fucking pray for them, and I, and I did my best to engage in the best way That'd possible. That'd be cool, Catherine. But eventually, when they started saying the F-slur and charged the media, and I was at the media line, I had to get out of there. And so the, the center of where I think that comes from, in my opinion, has to do with, of course, I think economic inequality is attributed to the fact that people have grasped onto this movement so desperately. But I think it ha a lot of it has to do with conspiracy peddling, and and we don't have information to support that. Sorry, Dylan. Uh, I, I I love you, but I disagree with that argument. Economic anxiety. The people who were there. Um, now, some of them may have been, but a lot of the people who were there were not poor rust belters. These were uh these were 
rural bougie fucks. These are people who can afford satellite TV on their rural house. They can't fly or drive down. Now, there were some buses of people that were brought in, unironically. Literally, uh, TPUSA was caught admitting this, that they bust people in and gave free hotels to people. But let's be real. Most of these people aren't acting on economic anxiety. Most of this, I mean, other than unless you stretch the defini definition of um, economic anxiety. I think we need to be careful about that. But I think that he is, I think, I think he is, uh, to be fair to Dylan, I think he's addressing the sentiment and the words. Yeah, they were, they're anxious. Yeah, they're anxious about minorities having a place in this country. And inflammatory rhetoric. Yeah, I agree. It's white supremacy. Okay, but I could push back on that as well. I agree right? with AOC so, on this one. So, I'm not dis the fact that you went through terrible stuff. I'll take you at your word. That is horrible. Yeah. I could put to hundreds of videos online and people that I have personally seen doing things like this, sitting down in Pittsburgh at a cafe for a cup of coffee, where and Black Lives Matter of, comes, throw a firework coffee, at him or something. Starts I got calling you. it yeah. right, throwing shit at them, hitting them, like shit like that. That it happened. It happened on the other side. People didn't want to talk about it. The idea that well, one side's protesting something that's real and the other side isn't, but that's the reason to decry the tactic as opposed to the motivation. Because the truth is, what? all sides are going to think that they're no, it they're isn't. justified in the no, action. it fucking isn't. If there was a cult that believed that that the 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 U.S. government was going to summon Cthulhu and then they stormed the Capitol and and sacrificed a bunch of people, we would say that's pretty bad. That's fucking horrible because they're literally deranged. Now, if there was a, a group that rose up against, say, Nazi Germany and attacked the state of Nazi Germany, their motivate they, they may have used some similar tactics, but they have very different motivation. One is based in reality, and the other one is based in complete and utter unhinged fiction. The fuck are you talking about? they're taking and mm -hmm. you want to talk about Jesus conspiracy Christ. theory nonsense like literally we... he's not even a both sides are he's only both sides in here to try and downplay uh how weaselly he's being he had mainstream politicians academics media people claiming i that know Trump me too was Penn, Hitler. Man, but it's all not of his happen, supporters were racist that ice agents were concentration camps and they were like yes. nazi soldiers so you don't think that, that that's because they verifiably are ICE agents are manning concentration camps, you idiot. That is a fact. That is a verifiably, publicly verifiable fact. That led to some of the violence that we saw. Idiots. And in addition, then He's you have to idiot. ask questions of how much of this came from the false narrative of hands up, don't shoot, that we know was a lie, that resulted in actual riots that continue to oh. be pushed over and over. Did you see Even that? Even witness wait, wait, statements, wait, wait. Well, forensic quick replay on and that. others prove that that wasn't true, that Michael Brown was going to be Did we see gun. that? So the getting parsing, like we could get into the actual riots that continue Watch to be Watch that. Watch his and face. And in addition, Watch then you have to ask questions of how much of this came from the false narrative of hands up, don't shoot, that we know was a lie, that resulted in actual riots that continued to be pushed over Ooh. and over, even though witness statements, forensic testimony, and others prove that that Dylan, wasn't true, that Michael Brown this was This is how you, that's how you know Dylan's getting mad. And I, I sympathize with this, because I get mad too. But he's controlling his anger. Look at this, he's trying to keep himself cool. Just, wa just watching that, you know, not to be all, you know, body, uh, body language expert, but you saw that face? Whew. For the gun. So the getting parsing, like we could get into this conversation of, well, was your side right or was my side right? The problem is we need to end political violence. That's the problem. It is not a justifiable tool. And what if, I see is one mm. of the biggest contributors. Now, to keep in mind, Rob says this now, but meanwhile, on his show, he r regularly, regularly motions towards militia behavior, towards arming up towards uh, the blood of patriots must the blood of tyrants must water the tree of freedom he does this all the time this is rob nor is a liar and a, and a manipulator hey well hey as long as you're having fun that's not a problem what I see that's happening now is when you had almost the entire establishment, when people couldn't believe what their own eyes were telling them, that we saw riot after riot occurring at it Black happens, Lives Cash. Matter rallies, I can and that was it. made excuses for, we said property destruction isn't violence, or we had Chris Cuomo say, 
Uh, well, where does it say yeah, in the me Constitution too, me too. that protests have to be peaceful? You know, that kind of crap. We had Joe Biden when asked about Antifa. Well, it's just an idea instead of condemning it. We had Kamala Harris bailing out people that were arrested for rioting and burning down a police precinct. When you see that over and over and you're on the other side, eventually extremists on that side are going to say, yes, we want to play so, this game as well. There we'll you go. There you go. See, now he's playing up. Now, now Rob is trying to be like, yeah, see, those uh, those rioters, they, they, they were justified. Yeah, see, it's because of Kamala Harris. They were justified. It was they were they were righteous in their uprising. None of those people fucking gave a shit about that it down we'll break into shit and that's so when we're talking about how do we stop this you stop it by criticizing your own side first which is exactly what i've done no but i don't see a lot not. of it in the left no he has fucking not god when he's it comes an idiot to the leadership of the left so fuck I, there was a few things i wanted to say but i, I kind of lost them along the way give me a moment here no problem um Oh, yes, I do know Antifa supposedly means anti-fascist. Uh, you dumb shits in Dylan's okay, chat. Okay, here it is. Here uh, just because just... you call yourself uh, anti-fascist. No, he doesn't. We had this conversation. I proved that. I proved that he knows nothing about Antifa. I probably taught him everything he knows about Antifa in our conversation. Not kidding you. Don't believe me? Go watch it. Doesn't mean you are. So the thing is... If we if we were in let's if we look at Hong Kong right we'll see some we look at we'll the riots that happened in Hong Kong we'll talk about that anybody looking on the outside says how do we end this from going on well the the people are, are outraged at the CCP's encroachment so obviously to stop what's going on we deal with the source of the issue which is the CCP's encroachment right if we look at Lebanon we see the economic disparity this is and all going over Rob's going head. On there, he knows nothing about of any of this. Uh, people needing assistance you to can hear just by, get by. This is the face that the Rob corruption. is making while Dylan talks about actual politics. That's the face. That's Rob's face. You can literally imagine it. And, 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 just listen, and you can the, hear it Hezbollah coming through. Is horrible, a million things I, I don't have time to get into. The people riot. That happens. This happens in every country in the world when these situations come up. It happened during the civil rights movement. It happened. Uh, Your in, ears in are telling you it right in now. In this country, and anytime there's a unattended social issue, rioting might be one of the outcomes that come from this, right? And so, anytime we see, have that outside perspective, we kind of have the ability to look at like, well, yeah, the the rioting's bad, obviously, but how do we deal with this? We deal with the issues at hand. We can complain all we want about rioting, but that isn't really going to stop the rioting. Any time, I, I can't think of any time in history where there was a mass civil disobedience, rioting, and and issues from unattended problems where us saying, "Well, let's do unity, everybody, stop the rioting. This is bad," has ever stopped it. It's only See you soon, been a combination of that type of dialogue while also attending to these issues, and so that's. And let's also get get around the fact that when we talk about what happened in D.C., I also felt the addition of the pipe bombs has changed the dimensions of how I view that event. The fact that bombs were placed in our nation's capital is fucking takes this from a simple riot, right? Which I'll hold the same standard. But I didn't say Antifa was terrorism. I don't say that Stormy the Capitol was terrorism in isolation. I'll fucking be consistent there. The placing of pipe bombs, that is terrorism. And I think Occurred that's why sure. this issue in D.C. No, that's a good has point, particularly Dylan. troubled me in comparison to all the other uh, issues, uh, events of d civil disobedience. Th that's right, what's really but, getting to me. But again, we don't even know who placed. As far as I know, we don't know who placed the. Yes, we bombs. do. Yes, yeah. we do. When they it's that. Remember, one these some of these bombs were placed by the guy who had fucking Ted Cruz's number in his pocket. We find out those people again deserve. The punishment, the fullest extent of the law should never see the light of day again outside of a prison, if not the death penalty. Totally agree with you there. Uh, but again, that what we're talking about, that could be one or two extremists. This would be the equivalent of saying, let's say hypothetically that this happened, that there was a big rally against Trump or against Trump and against Republicans. And in that event, the guy that shot True. Steve Scalise show shoots that one after. a Republican. Would uh -huh. we then say, this is troubling because originally it was just a protest, but now the fact that there was a premeditation attempted murder, now that's suspect of the whole crowd? Okay, no, you would so Dil, I can explain this, Kulu. 
Um, why wouldn't the act of storming the Capitol itself not be terrorism? They weren't entering to take pics and to leave, lol. Okay, Dylan is very careful about his definition of terrorism, which I can understand and respect. Um, Dylan has a very international perspective on the idea of terrorism, and he uh, argues that we should be very careful to label people terrorists because, as we know, um, the way that America handles terrorists is, well, usually by killing them executing them like extrajudicially with drones so it's very politically charged and dylan is very 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 careful about how he labels people terrorists so yes that's why say i'm not going to blame the other people that weren't breaking the law in that crowd yeah, but, for the idea that uh, one lone yeah tech dead i think that's a reasonable um definition but the fact of the matter is there is no um consensus on a definition of terrorism um like none um, n not even, uh, various, yeah, ex yeah, you know, you know this. There's no consistent definition of what terrorism is, even among different branches of the government, but especially on a global scale. But, nonetheless, the war on terror has been going for years. So even though we don't have a clear definition of what terrorism actually is, we've been killing people in the name of saying they're terrorists. So, yeah. Yeah. Nutbag went out and shot. Well, I'm I'm not blaming everybody else in the crowd. I'm blaming the person who did that. But I'm saying it is troubling. Yeah. That this environment where people were storming their nation's capital, where where a police officer was beat to death with a fire extinguisher, the media was rushed, uh, their now equipment listen, was smashed, listen, and then is pipes, that, is that bombs the case? were planted. Is that, that just real quick on that because I. I I'm, I'm assuming that it is true, but I've also heard them say that he died of natural causes. Now, that could mean, well, he got, had a stroke because he was beaten. Dude, oh my God, listen to this. See, this is why this is why people like Rob Knorr, I think, are dangerous to platform. Not that Dylan did anything wrong here, but people, you have to be aware of these things. What Rob is doing is he's, he's taking a wedge in every possible statement of fact, and he's making holes in it so that there's room for all this conspiracy mindedness to fill in. He's a demagogue. That's what he does. Pay attention to that type of tactics. All of you who are watching, pay attention to that type of shit. In the head with the fire extinguisher. But I just don't, I'm willing to, I'm operating through my argument as if Trump people murdered that guy and they should be charged with the fullest. Yeah, and, 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 this, and even, if, I, even not... if the cop wasn't single-handedly murdered, the pipe bombs and everything else in and of itself would be that but I, I haven't heard of the natural causes thing I mean um right well I mean it, it's been all over the place but yeah, ah, okay the pipe ah, bombs are boring I don't listen to that. that listen to that oh my god oh it's been all over the place no actual citation for a major claim that casts doubt and allows people who are favorable to his position to have a pivot out this is all emotional this is one thing I'm a little worried about Dylan here I hope Dylan's able to come down on this because right now Rob is is running around him with an emotional narrative now Dylan is doing a good job trying to address the facts but Rob is so doubt and providing emotional narratives for any right right wingers or people who might be vulnerable in the audience at all but i don't understand how that directly links to I, I, people I can, that even yes, exactly. been, i can Red tell Dog. you how it directly links to what i'm concerned about if, if you want okay. i'm not i'm not sure. directly linking it to anybody who ever voted for trump i'm not doing that okay. i'm not saying that rob you are are the person who who you're the person who planted the bomb rob i'm not that's not what i'm saying but I do oh, believe I don't know where my water that is. when we have drink. like Rudy Giuliani come out and say trial by combat, I think I'm gonna have like a that, back those types of soon. words. When everybody, when a lot of people in that crowd think that there was massive voter fraud, think the election mm -hmm. was stopped, was stolen from them, are here to stop the steal, and uh, have got put a lot of their hopes on Mike Pence changing it all. There's a lot of people. I'm not. I don't True believe cash. you were one of True. them. I, I never saw that in any of your threads or anything. But there was a lot of people who thought that Mike Pence had the constitutional authority to just pretend that Pennsylvania didn't exist or something. I forget the exact scheme, but the idea was you ignore Pennsylvania um, and Georgia. He would, yeah, it, it was. It, he would confirm different electors. I think. Exactly. I or, or there was some, it was it was something that he was going to overturn. Of course, that wasn't going to happen. But look, if you right, if you have a problem with it, then the states deal with it. It is not the vice president's role. To, to that's just overturn. Imagine, if imagine Trump's if that happened. And you disagree. Exactly. Imagine if that happened in 2000 and fucking yep. the fucking Bill false Clinton's concession. vice president came up and was like, "What he's doing right now is a false concession. He's making a false concession on an on a meaningless point, to so that the audience seem, sees 
that he's reasonable and can be wrong. But this is a false concession. Him conceding that, oh, it would be dumb if, if, if Pence did that is irrelevant to the conversation. But nonetheless, it allows him to pretend that he's an impartial source who's reasonable. You see what I mean? That's what a false concession is. Just so you know, it's manipulative. Nope, Al Gore's president now. Like that, that's, that I agree can't 100%. do that. So they believe that a lot of them believe Mike Pence was going to save America from, you know, Joe Biden and fucking get Trump, right? They they thought the election was stolen from them. They've been pumped full hey, of theories online or in other areas of Dominion voting and conspiracy and fraud. There's been, and of course, you know what? I'll listen to cases about voter fraud. There oh, was, don't and it worry seems about from it. my perspective, I hope the we can have, yeah, have, have some fun. You could say that was either done to improper filings or this or that, but they had the opportunity, and the, and the Trump team seemed to have failed in the objective and of presenting new mic voter setup. fraud to the public. Same mic, but they have said multiple setup. times in court there wasn't, but... Uh, the, it, it, but Probably they were pumped full of all these we'll ideas, see. and then they're told trial by combat. Wait, famous horse, I got to give you your on, fancy on, name on stage by Rudy Giuliani, and then we see this result. And this is also now, the same person. I mean, Trump has said things like, "When the shooting starts, when the looting starts, the shooting starts." Right? This I this, right? this type of violent type rhetoric uh, that 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 does concern me. That I think. It's well, not that hard for me to connect quick. the dots here in my mind. I'm going to give most okay, famous horse. So let me push back on this, right? So Why one, don't I, have your I name, read, because I heard what you said. First off, Trump specifically himself said that there they were go. going Got there. Got your fancy name, peaceful. famous Second, horse. the people that started Enjoy the violence name. started the violence with Trump still having 20 minutes left in a speech. Third, if you're going to say, well, Trump should be held responsible because or because of Rudy Giuliani or Rudy Giuliani should be held a responsible. I curd. read the comment. He's talking specifically about combat as in going into the, he's saying, we're going to file these court cases. I'll put my reputation on the line with their lawyers. It'll be trial by combat. Listen to that fucking charitability. So meaningless. Meaning we're going to duke this out as if you would say something like we're going to combat racism and things like that. Now, was this, was the, was this responsible rhetoric? No, I don't think so. I think that Trump and Rudy should have understand. Even Was it responsible rhetoric? Oh no, but but he didn't mean any of those things. Oh, the rhetoric didn't do anything, but it's irresponsible. I mean, it didn't do anything, but it was irresponsible for sure. They weren't inciting violence. They knew people were pissed. And they knew, I think that they should have came out and said, made it clear over and over again, this will be peaceful. You will not. If you see someone engaging in violence, point them out. Get them out of here. Let the police know. They should have done that. And I agree with you. I don't think it's impeachable. I don't think it means that they're directly responsible. But is. they were negligent. It is. Knowing oh. that a situation like that could be fired up. Having said all of that. We've seen this over and over and over again with the left. I could bring up at least a dozen videos of prominent figures on the left, including mainstream politicians such as Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, and others saying, uh, you know, uh, Eric There's Holder, the when they go low, we kick them. Uh, we welcome the peaceful protesters that stormed the Capitol under the Kavanaugh here. You know, storming the Capitol, that's insurrection. Oh, wait, until the well, Democrats. What? Listen to that gish gallop. Absolute gish gallop. Absolute fucking gish gallop. Holy fucking shit. Literally claiming that there were Democrats who stormed the Capitol without any evidence? No, that fucking didn't happen. Literally, the worst, the worst of the BLM protests in DC were stayed off of the Capitol lawn. What the fuck is he talking about during the Kavanaugh hearing? What the fuck? No. It's not that he's memeing or or stupid. I mean, I do think he is a little bit stupid, but he's manipulative. Good faith actor. Rob Knorr is a demagogue. Rob Knorr is from the school of of Rush Limbaugh, okay? He's not as good as Rush Limbaugh. He's not as skilled, but that's the school he operates on. It does not matter how much dishonesty he needs to engage in. He has an end goal in sight, and that is right-wing control of America. That's what he's pushing for. Everything else is secondary to that. I've to seen you say this a few times Kavanaugh, you know, about like there'll that? be like somebody who rushes a congressman's office, right? And they'll do a sit-in or something. I don't know if that's really comparable to people busting in the windows of the Capitol while bombs are planted around it's the not. city and fucking the media is assaulted and their equipment smashed and then people end up possibly getting beaten to death by fire extinguisher. I don't think that's really comparable to a 
to a sit-in protest. Okay, it's not. It wasn't a sit-in. Uh, the difference is this: like ah. you hear this kind of. Well, if it was if it was Black Lives Matter that rushed the Capitol, the police would have treated them harshly. Well, a basically commiserate group, at least ideologically aligned with the same political party, and the people ca protesting Kavanaugh based on the conspiracy theory that he was a gang rapist and was going to bring women into the Handmaid's Tale. Uh, what happened? That was not a conspiracy theory. That's not a conspiracy theory. Those were direct allegations that needed to be investigated. And also, there is no equivalence. There is no equivalence between someone doing a sit-in peacefully in the front office and then immediately getting beaten beaten and arrested by cops versus people bashing down the door, killing cops, fucking trying to kill senators. What the fuck? What happened was the police basically decided to let them storm the Capitol. If they had formed lines and started using tear gas and fighting back, who knows what could have happened when it came. But instead, they just said, we'll let them in. We'll let them chase congressmen into elevators, and then we'll arrest them afterwards. That's what they did. If they would have done the same with these people, who knows how it would have ended. Now, I would have much preferred that the police stop. That's not an argument in his favor. That's not an argument in Rob's favor. That's an argument in Dylan's favor. What the fuck? both groups from getting into the capitol would have been my preference on this but yeah. even if you don't like that yeah I mean, exactly, it just, it just doesn't seem comparable because they were i mean they were they were chanting hang mike pence my guy i mean that seems a little bit different than did, going did in there did you hear and what they yelling. were chanting over kavanaugh were they saying hang kavanaugh kill him execute kavanaugh i don't know that they said those words but they oh, were saying he was oh a... interesting interesting how that works out rob nor gang rapist that he needed to be removed we had madonna outside said that many times she's I thought mean, about burning down the white house that's i mean, I mean and, and then and then even if you don't want and to yeah that, and madonna's rhetoric's bad but i i don't really i don't think and then look what the crowd did well did they burn they peacefully protested and had a sit-in what the fuck Are down the white house no but they stormed capitol hill did, they, did anybody die? Was anybody hung? Was so, was anybody, was there bombs planted? I, I don't planted? know if people were harmed. But ah. again, so you're saying. Oh, that narrative's starting to come apart. It entered through metal detectors. Exactly, I know. I don't know. How convenient that you don't know, but you're playing an equivalence between people who literally took guns and stormed the Capitol and tried to kill senators. Good night, no ton of no Aji. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, fuck Rob Nor. I agree. Because what, the bomb thing, that's why I'm saying it's different than totally just the people storming the cap. How about outside DC, outside the White House? Yep. Okay. May 31st, again. that evening. What about ism? Okay. When they were May chanting 31st. death to Trump outside the White House, right? Yeah, that's bad. Okay. Was I'm that bad. an insurrection? What did Nancy Pelosi say about that? What did Kamala Harris say about that? Remember Tom Cotton tried to put an article in the Dish New York Galloping Times saying, hey, right we now. need to unleash the National Guard. Yeah. We can't have if the I White House. Debate, if I had to debate Rob or Redneck again, who would you settle with? I don't care. Either one. Fucking bring it. Well, okay. Actually, I don't want to talk to Redneck again. So it'd have to be Rob because Rob would be really funny. And I and Rob is not good against my style. Rob does not succeed against my style. It's being stormed. What was the left wing, the New York Times, what was the left wing politicians reaction to that? Did they say, absolutely, well, let's send 15,000. Well, let me, let me give, let me out. give, can I, let me give my reaction to it, right? Um, okay. So I think it's bad when somebody calls for the death of their political opponents, right? For example, Great. one of the things that made me tweet out, which a lot of people don't know why I took the time to, I saw somebody with like an execute Hillary shirt when I was there. It was like four years past the election and some people are still on Hillary Clinton for some fucking reason. Nobody will debate and me I anymore, saw Ivano. They're too scared. All, all that type of dialogue. And and the difference for me is, right? And the thing that gets me is that dialogue's bad. There are some on right? the channel Obviously, though, Obviously, yeah. I'll condemn it. Anybody who says we should kill Trump or kill any politician, that's bad. Right? Again, nitpickers who are going to say, what about Hitler? Well, obviously it's different. Right? The, the difference in here is when I look look at Hold what on, happened the there, link. it's they'll rush in, they'll yell at politicians, and that's the worst that happened. And I'm not saying it's it's Hold good to get in someone's face and yell working. at them. Let me see. But I, I, it's hard for me, like, mentally to, like, hear someone say, well, what about that time oh, they, they went in an it's elevator and yelled at a politician Instead of during F the Brett Kavanaugh era? And I know the exact footage you're talking you about. It doesn't seem comparable at all to people doing what just happened, storming the Capitol, breaking in windows, fucking people like. Wh What's that? Did you say a tournament arc? What's that that you said apricots love? Something about a tournament? Hmm. 
wouldn't it be interesting if there was such a thing in the future? What was it? Six are dead? Five or six are dead now? Not to mention, but again, I, it's hard for me to ever I, again, like, put these on the same level. The, again, this scene. So apparently, this one cop died because there were a, a conflict where I'm going with the official narrative here, where a Trump supporter or a group of Trump supporters hit him with a fire extinguisher. He later died of a stroke as a result of that. So let's assume that's true. So that then paints the entire thing in a different light. So, for example, yes. in D.C., we saw or outside the White House, we saw that all of these people trying to get into the White House, chanting all sorts of stuff like kill Trump, trying to get in and remove the president of the United States from the White House, they were physically attacking the police. If one of those officers would have died, then now all of a sudden you're saying, oh, yes, now that is, was insurrection. Well, well, before I, it wasn't well, insurrection. Wait, wait, I never said it was insurrection. I never used the word uh, okay, insurrection. My bad, my bad. But that's how it's being spun well, by people that are justifying. Well, I, I don't know if I would use the word insurrection. I don't know if that's the correct word. Um, I would say that there was people there who was acting and most certainly in a seditious manner, right? People who were going in there with fucking zip ties, chanting "Hang Mike Pence." It seemed pretty clear what the intention was, right? Okay, busting out so you windows. You would say that it would now, be sedition then. I would the say it, 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 at least in a seditious manner. Once they've gotten into the white, I mean, I, I, I mean, at least at the very minimum, and that's me trying to be as charitable as physically possible. This is this is now, obviously Dylan somebody... is being so charitable here. I think that Dylan. Dylan's charitability here is actually hurting his case. Unironically, I think Dylan's like extreme charitability here harms his case. We know they went in, they stole shit from Nancy Pelosi's computer. They trashed Nancy Pelosi's office. They tra they they fucking targeted specific people, and that's being ignored in this. Yeah literally fighting with police to try to rush the White House, right? Then that seems pretty seditious as well. I'll say that right now. It's just that the impact of these two events were so different in, in, in the amount of lives Not just lost, the impact, but the intent. In the amount hey, of harm that could have been you. possible when you have the addition of, of bombs being planted, when you see the how, how, how the media was treated, um, the, the difference in scale and brutality of these two events make it hard for me to like really... I mean, take the comparison seriously. It, it's, I totally disagree. Again, if the police would have cracked down on what we saw was the Capitol Hill protesters under Kavanaugh, who knows the <laughs> Fair, violence Omrit. that could have occurred, but they didn't, Fair. they allowed them in. The problem, I'll and this is that. the fundamental problem, you're going to see more riots like this, right? You're going to see, and I- Damn, that's a threat. I'm going to continue to fight back against more and more right-wing nuts that you see occur. I'm happy to hear they're that. Going, they're going to occur. And you want to know one of the big reasons that they're going to occur is because almost the entire establishment has given total pass to any time there's left-wing violence. And so the right that then sees, we That's see the mainstream is, media, case. if a Trump supporter goes out and punches a Biden supporter, my God, it's horrible political violence. So, if a Biden supporter does it to a Trump supporter, eh, no big deal. It's bad. We I'll say, I'll York say Times. right now, it's bad if somebody punches somebody because they disagree with them, right? Okay, Obviously, that's because I, as somebody who's been in a position where many people could have beat the shit out of me and some it looked like they were getting close to, it's not, a, it's, it's, you put yourself in a vulnerable position when you go to these events as somebody who uh, disagrees with what the vast majority of people there are. And I, and I'll condemn it and I will condemn it. I don't think that's what they were me, saying, Red Dog. I, and, and I do want to, I don't think that's what, I don't think that's what Kays was playing at all. Yeah. I, so fuck it. We're doing, I, I really hate, I'm actually enjoying this conversation with you because we're doing it in a very productive manner. Um, I hate to cut this short because I have two minutes left. So okay. I, I just want to make my central point, then you can make your central point, and then we can wrap it up. Okay. Um, my my main thing here is that I think Trump has acted in an irresponsible manner when it comes to pumping these guys' heads full of ideas that the election was stolen. And even when it was going on, he was he was talking about, you know, how how these the, these people are special and and how he still went on about the idea it was stolen, even though there was no evidence. And even after this had all occurred, I, I have yet to see him come out and say, you know what? I thought it was stolen. Uh, I, I, I thought uh, that there was uh, millions of illegals who voted last uh, in last election. I said, you know, it was stolen against me in the Republican primaries 2015. But you know what? It seems I was wrong. Um, we haven't been able to find proof of that. Um, I'm happy that we did a inspection of our democracy. I have yet to see a statement like that. And so and there even hasn't been after one and there the never events will of be this, one. there's still the environment that created the situation still exists. 
because those the the conspiracy theories that compelled these people to think that their democracy was under threat they're under threat by dominion voting under threat by the democrats under threat by uh, uh by this and that and all of this who thought they were taking themselves to action by storming the capitol to save democracy and the president has yet to act to counteract those messages and has actively hyped them up now if anybody was at all calling for the execution of trump that's bad uh if anybody was calling to go hurt donald trump that that's that is bad and i will say that right now uh but we also need to remember that i i i don't think that the scale of the impact of the events you're giving to me right now i just it seems so disproportionate when the it comes scale, to scale now the I'll, intent, I'll leave you to the be reality uninterrupted of them? for like two minutes and i gotta like end straight okay I'll, I'll be as quick as well. Uh, the scale isn't close because when we see the left-wing violence that's been ignored, we see over 57 people have died as a result of the Black Lives Matter movement. We've seen Trump supporters actually, like in Portland, targeted and... Yeah, who died? Who were the people who died? It was the protesters, you idiot. It was protesters who died. The protesters were the ones who got killed, you fucking idiot. We've seen the media... Forgive this. We've seen Kamala Harris, who's going to be vice president, bail out the people that were riding and did all these things. We've seen them have an insurrection against the country where they Citation actually needed. had a Chaz zone. And they were seceding from doesn't know anything about Chaz country and then killed a young black man. Uh, the people that did that secession, that wasn't considered an insurrection. We saw them storm Capitol Wait, Hill. Yes, it literally Capitol was. Protest. Yes, it literally was. That was crushed. Chaz was crushed by the police while they were being peaceful and be basically welcomed in the door. Idiot. Uh, we saw them try go outside the White House and engage in violence and try to get in. They were kept out by a massive police force. All of this stuff was done with people. I don't think people like, like I'm just going to say, it, I don't think many left-wing commentators, including yourself, spoke out as heavily against that as I've spoke out against what I saw as Trump supporters engaged in a riot at Capitol Hill. I feel like the treatment is obvious, the double standards, and as long as we forgive some sort of political violence, then it's going to encourage political violence inevitably to be on the other side. Dylan, you might not think so. I'll take you at your word. Look at your chat. Trump supporters are fascist. We shouldn't talk to these people. They're racist. They are racist and they are fascist. Wait, good faith actor, I've already done that. I've already debated with him. I've already debated Rob Nor multiple times. You can go watch. There's, it's uh it's it's in my uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, hold on, somebody can uh, if anybody would mind, would somebody mind grabbing the link to the Rob Nor one for Good Faith Actor? Because I think you'll enjoy it, Good Faith Actor. I destroyed him in that debate. Trump's a Nazi. Remember when we were told that the 2006 or 2016 election was stolen for four years? When people told us Wait, like you want to react to my own debate? I could. I mean, I could do that. That would be kind of. We have 107 people here right now. How many people would have seen the original? Probably less than that. Honestly, probably more people here haven't seen it than have. Maybe. Let's all well, think about it. I'll think about it. If that Trump was a Russian plant, that was a lie. These were all lies. I haven't heard Adam Schiff come out and apologize for that. Yet that directly okay. could have inspired people to achieve some of these violent actions we've seen in the riots that occurred. All right, all I'll summer. think about it. So the idea that Trump, right. who said this should be peaceful, I've never done that. I haven't done that in a long wrong, time. Had to specifically come out. You know, I haven't done that in a long, long time. Hmm. Say no, I was wrong. You never would give that same standard to the other side that literally, literally bailed out rioters. Literally. You could say that Trump inspired whatever. He didn't bail out rioters. That was the left. And so to hear them and people like your callers say that the right wing I'll think about this. is laughable. Okay, man. Uh, you're going to get your kid into any sports? I don't know. Not football, despite that I loved it because like CTE stuff. Um, uh, I, no, really? I would love to get him into uh, soccer or wrestling or baseball. Whichever what about boxing? I was a boxer in high school. Boxing? Yeah. We don't have rural PA. You know, we don't have, we have wrestling's big here, but as far as like stuff like boxing, there's actually MMA gyms popping up, but mm. it might, whatever he wants. A lot of votes for uh, impeachment coverage. I would personally love him to get into chess. Impeachment coverage. Okay. I'm a nerd. So. <laughs> he might not be. He might be a big jock. I mean, you named yeah. him Hank. He can only he can That's only right. get into football. Hank Hill was a huge there football player. In high school. All right, so we're gonna do impeachment yep. coverage yeah. next. Yeah, then we'll maybe it. do the react at the All end. All right, for you too, man. Take yeah. it easy. Well, that was an interesting uh, note to end the stream on. Hmm. Huh? Don't you guys think? <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I think I made all the points I wanted to. I think uh, I made my points clearly. Um. Yeah. Anyway. 
Let's see if I can, um, let's see if there's anybody good to raid. Everybody. All right. So what do I think of this? Uh, let's give, let, let me share my thoughts. Uh, I think the Dylan style, uh, here does not work as well against Rob Nor as it would work against other people. Rob Nor is a demagogue he is a propagandist you have to meet him on those grounds because what he will do is he will run circles around people in order to like i said create cracks in the truth and in those cracks he will fill it with conspiratorial nonsense now people in the audience who are watching some of those people are going to have a conspiratorial mind some of those people are going to have the um the bias that he's looking for and they'll fill in those cracks in the way he wants them to and that's that's how that works that's how that style works that's why they gish gallop and pivot all the time you don't have to interrupt hardcore you just have to check them on their claims and point out that they're jumping to all these different things but they're ignoring the core fact of the discussion you notice that rob rarely actually stuck to a single point he wasn't constructing an argument he was throwing out things that are designed to cloud the situation designed to instill doubt that's what he did the entire conversation remember the entire thing he what was his core argument does anybody know what his core argument was was his core argument that it wasn't an insurrection well no he wasn't arguing that it wasn't an insurrection he was just arguing well maybe it's not an interaction uh an insurrection was he um you know was he arguing that they were in the right well no not necessarily he was just saying well maybe they were in the right you see what i mean he's doing jacking off just asking questions and and every single step along the way every fact that dylan put forward he would counter with plausible with plausible uh plausible doubt Yeah, it's just propaganda. That's all he did. He propagandized for that entire time. And it's frustrating because um, Rob Nor's style is designed to take advantage of like what I would consider, no offense to Dylan, liberal good faith. The idea that somebody is actually... Um, bringing up these points because they believe they construct an argument he's not he's trying to negate actual facts by instilling doubt by saying well yeah but what about these ones aren't those guys bad and then the people in the audience who do already think that antifa is bad will go yeah yeah what about that it's about confirming biases it's about massaging and soothing biases in the audience in favor of his narrative he's building a narrative not an argument Yeah. It's what it is. It's what it is. It is massaging. It's e it's ego and it's uh, ego and bias massage. That's what it is. Rob seems like the perfect type to take advantage of middle-aged right-leaning person who's just getting into politics and doesn't know much. Yes. It sounds then it, like then that it was a mistake for Dylan to platform him. No. No, I don't think so. Um you can't avoid all negative platforming and also this was like towards the end of a stream. While I think that Dylan didn't do the best that he that he could have here, um I I think perhaps he was a little unprepared. I don't think he did horrible. And I do recognize that Dylan did lay out a few important points. For example, bringing up the scale was very important now i will i agree that rob uh sidestepped the scale by um sort of downplaying the scale and by claiming that there was like 57 people killed during blm protests protesters which were protesters 57 people in the largest civil rights uh, pro series of civil rights protests in the history of the united states and 57 mostly protesters were killed you know, do you see how that muddies the water by being very vague? He's intentionally vague. Again, this is what demagogues do. Demagogues seek to confirm your biases and just nudge you in their favor. This is why I talk about um, being careful about debating, um, debating demagogues, debating propagandists, because they are looking to hook people in your audience into their narrative.
Is Dylan just not familiar with debating people who argue in bad faith? Um, I think he's done it before, but sometimes it can be really, really hard. It can be incredibly hard to deal with somebody who gish gallops all over the place. In my debate with Rob Knorr about Antifa, I controlled the conversation. And we'll watch, maybe we'll watch this after if everyone's feeling up to it. And we'll review it and I'll talk about what I did and why I did it. Um, in that conversation, I controlled the conversation. I made the claims and he had to wallow against them. He did not prepare at all. I had like stats, figures, stories, uh, historical examples, all. I mean, I've shown my, my document is publicly available um, to this day. But I had all of that on hand and I controlled the narrative. I never let Rob control the narrative because that's what he wants to do. He wants to control the narrative. He wants to be like, yeah, well, are, are they really that different? We're not so different, you and I. That's what he's trying to do. He's doing the villain speech. It's bullshit. It's, it's bullshit artistry and it's propaganda. So again, I don't think Dylan did bad. I just don't think that Dylan's style here was ideal for dealing with Rob Knorr. And Rob Knorr got to drive a lot of wedges into incontrovertible facts. And if it was me going into this conversation, there would have been, I would have said, provide me a citation for that. Let's talk about that then. If you want to pivot and talk about something else, but we're not talking about 57 BLM things. We're not talking about ooh, Chaz Chop. We're not talking about whatever boogeyman you want to summon up. Let's talk about the insurrection on the Capitol, what you came here to talk about. But he doesn't want to do that. You know? Yeah, he doesn't want to do that. You have to be careful with propagandists because they engage in in conversation in a very different way than your uh, your sort of typical debater. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some truth to that, Marinara. Um, Dylan is very good, very very good at uh, mediation. Um, but it's but here's the thing. To be fair. Challenging a propagandist is very difficult. Do you know how hard it is to argue against a propagandist? It's fucking difficult. It's really hard because they're slippery as fuck. Like debating prop, like, like, and I would argue that Rob Knorr, though I don't hold a whole lot of respect for him, he does have some skill as a propagandist. And that can be very difficult to deal with. And again, that's because propaganda is designed it's designed to take shortcuts. Propaganda uses emotional shortcuts, uh, cognitive shortcuts, in order to bypass actually making a, a meaningful argument. Now, they'll suggest an argument to you because that's the goal of propaganda. But it uses bias. It acts on your emotion. Like, for example, a great example of something that is propaganda, but for a good cause, was what we watched, that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger video we watched. That was a piece of propaganda. Now, I think it was propaganda for a good cause, but nonetheless, it was highly emotional. It's meant to get you uh, motivated about a specific thing. And that's what, that's what Rob Nord did in this discussion. And the cool thing is, now, all of us who um, are a little bit, you know, a little bit resistant to... Um, some of that um uh where we're, where we're resistant to some of that propaganda propagandization not everyone's completely resistant no one is completely resistant but you know a lot of us respect a uh, structured dialogue and dylan does do structured dialogue he tries to meet people in the best in absolute good faith as good faith as he can he always takes the time to try and steel man their arguments but Rob Knorr does not give him the benefit of the doubt. Rob Knorr does not return that favor. And as a result, Rob Knorr is able to spit out a bunch of bullshit into the room. So, yeah.